After my first semester of university, at the beginning of May, I decided to reward myself by getting tickets for a band I wanted to see. They weren't playing in my hometown, unfortunately, and the nearest venue they were playing was in a small town six hours away by train. I had a friend who attended university in the town who agreed to let me stay with her, so I figured that I would be fine to go up. I had never been to this town before, but having lived in larger cities my entire life, I often associate small towns with safety. I declined my friend's offer to drive me to the concert, considering she was studying for finals, and I enjoy a good walk. The town was divided by a river, and to cross that river, you had to first go over one bridge, then walk through a park on an island, then cross a second bridge to get back into town. To get to the first bridge from my friend's university, you had to walk down a nature trail. All this was perfectly lovely as I did it at sunset. I had just emerged from my first winter in a rather harsher environment than I had grown up in, and the whole nature trail park combo was filled with joggers and children playing with squirrels and everything that I had missed. This is only noteworthy in that I felt completely at ease with my route. But I was pretty distracted and didn't pay a whole lot of attention to exactly which path I had taken. The concert didn't let out until probably slightly past midnight. I had got to the first bridge, crossed, and proceeded across the island to the second bridge. It was a nice night out and I was actually sort of enjoying myself in the warm spring air. That is, until I got to a hill I didn't remember walking over on the way there. I stopped at the base of it, feeling that something was off. But eventually, attributing it to the fact that I had somehow forgotten an entire hill, all my thoughts ceased as I got to the top and found myself looking down the path into an empty carnival, and beyond that, the second bridge. Bit of context, I'm a 5'7", 120 pound female, trained as a circus performer, aerialist, pretty much my entire life. This means that whatever extra weight I carry is pretty much all muscle, which serves, if for nothing else, as a boost of confidence. And also that I don't have any sort of fear of carnivals or clowns or anything. But walking over a hill I didn't remember to see an entire carnival I didn't remember definitely set me on edge. But I didn't really see any way around it, literally forest on either side. Plus the bridge was right there. And besides, the carnival looked abandoned. So I start off down the other side of the hill into the creepy carnival, maintaining a quick pace, definitely on high alert. I kept my focus mainly on the bridge I was aiming for. I was most of the way through when I saw the people. I saw them far enough away that I didn't jump, but I did stop dead in my tracks. They seemed pretty normal looking by their clothes, and I was too far away to see their faces. They were sitting in whatever was available. Lemonade stands, immobile roller coasters, covered picnic tables. I didn't really know what to do about any of it at all, and I'm sure there were much, much better options available but in the moment, feeling I had to do something, I started to walk forwards again. And as I did, I made eye contact with the first one of them and held it as I walked through them. The man I had chosen to look at, I remember very vividly, looked a lot like I imagined death would look like. A gaunt, drawn out face with no expression of any type on it, sunken eyes that followed me as the rest of his body stayed still. From what I could tell, the rest did the same. I was terrified out of my wits, and for some reason, making eye contact with this zombie of a man was the only thing that I felt was keeping me safe. I never broke eye contact with him until I reached the second bridge, so far as to opt to walk backwards down the trail. I turned and crossed the bridge at a sprint, and someone shouted behind me, which only prompted me to run faster. Now, I mentioned that the route from the university to the bridge was a nature trail. This meant that it had no lights on it and was as black as the void. Trees covering up the moon and making it impossible to see anything. I didn't care. I ran down the trail, tripping over who knows what, anything to put distance between me and the creepy carnival people. Eventually, I reached a patch of light at the edge of the university and stopped. 
there wasn't any noise anymore except for crickets and my own frantic breathing. If any had followed me, they hadn't done so for long. I managed to gather myself together enough and remember that I did in fact have a cell phone, which at that point I used to call my friend to have her meet me at a well-lit spot on campus populated by studying students. I told her what happened and her eyes got really wide. As it turned out, unbeknownst to me, there were two trails through the park on the island, a north one and a south one. I had taken the north one on the way there and accidentally taken the south one on the way back. She told me that people never, ever pass through the carnival at night and it was where the local meth addicts would hang out. They were unpredictable at best and at their worst. Well, muggins were the least of it. I had gotten off extremely lucky, so everything ended up being explainable, but somehow that made it even worse. I didn't sleep well that night, and when my friend offered to drive me to the train station across the river the following evening, I accepted. So, this happened when I was younger, quite a while ago, but it was one of the creepiest things that's ever happened to me, and I thought y'all might like to hear it. Anyway, I was probably about 12 or 13, and my mom dropped me and my younger brother off at this little carnival thing in the supermarket parking lot. I don't know if they really do stuff like that anymore, but they used to set up smaller carnivals with maybe 10 rides and a couple food vendors. Anyway. We had been there for maybe an hour, and I noticed that this guy had been watching us for a while, and then I realized that he was sort of following us around to different rides. I figured he was one of the workers, since he was wearing a carnival hat, and his clothes were pretty much the same colors as the other people working there. I would look around and spot him watching us from a couple rides over, or standing next to one of the food stands. Now, I don't want to be an asshole, but this guy had the creepiest face. One of his eyes looked like it had been swallowed up by his huge swollen eyelid. He had these chapped lips that looked like they were bleeding in places. And he just kept following us around for like 30 minutes, mumbling to himself and staring. After a while, I decided that we should leave and find a way to call my mom. As we were about to leave the carnival area, literally about to walk through the exit, this guy hollers to both of us and grabs my brother's shoulder to pull him back in. He starts telling us that we're too young to be there alone and asking where our parents are. I mean, I was young, but there were tons of kids there even younger than us without their parents. He pulled us off to the side area between two rides and pushed us behind him, then just stood guard in front of us. I kept asking to use a phone to call my mom since I was still hoping it was actually about us being too young to be there by ourselves. Finally, he gives me this phone that obviously has no SIM card in it or something because it just displays that error message that old phones used to have. I kept begging him to let us go and he kept muttering, No, we're gonna take you somewhere real safe. Real safe. Then. He starts laughing and asked if my mom had picked up, obviously not, and saying that he's going to have to take us himself since there's no one else to take us wherever the fuck he had planned. Finally, we see another worker walking by and I yell out to her if I can use her phone. The guy immediately freezes and then just starts walking away like nothing happened. I explained to the woman what had happened and she just looked really confused and kind of worried. I didn't find out until a couple years later, but I guess she told my mom that she didn't think the guy even worked there, that she had never seen him before in her time working. This happened just under two years ago, in June, July, 2015. Bored, and with nothing else to do, my friends and I decided to go to one of those pop-up fairs that come every year for about a week. It was really small, with only a couple of rides that we actually wanted to go on. One of which was the ride where you stand up, are strapped in, and hold onto the metal bars at the side of you. It then spins in a circle, tipping you every which way. 
I had never been on one of those rides, so I wanted to take the opportunity to go on it. I paid my money and waited on the ramp for one of my friends, we'll call her Lucy, to pay and come with me. However, as she got to the front of the queue, she suddenly stepped to the side and shouted, Hey, I've got a weird feeling. I'm going on the waltzers. Confused, I reply an elongated, okay, and head up onto the ride on my own. Sure, I was confused, but I definitely wasn't unfazed. I stand where the ride assailant tells me to, and wait. It starts to fill up, and three boys, around six or seven years older than me, I was 12 at the time, stand by me. Two at one side, one at the other. Weird, I think, since there are multiple places where they could have stood together. The boys start messing around with their seat belts. Is that what they're called? Eventually, one of them manages to take it off. He nudges me. See that, kiddo? It's off. He proceeds to do a really creepy laugh, like you'd see in the movies. <laughs> Truly creeped out. I just stand there, not reacting to his gesture, and trying not to think about his intentions. Then, he started fiddling with my seatbelt. I lean away from him, idiotically thinking that this would bring the seatbelt out of his reach. Of course, the seatbelt stayed where it was. He looks up at me, smiles, and says, Ah, 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 as if to say to keep still. Again, I don't react and just stand there until I feel my seatbelt sliding against my skin. He'd managed to take it off. In a mad scramble, pulling toggles and pushing fabric against fabric, I lock my seatbelt back in place. It really isn't a strong seatbelt. It could easily break. Thoughts of such nature rushed through my head. I was distracted by the seatbelt remover person. A very snazzy name, I know. You know, there really won't be enough time for putting your seatbelt back on when you're spinning around, possibly falling into the motors. He laughed again. Get ready to die, little kid. At the same time as saying the last sentence, he began unbuckling my seatbelt once again. I presumed, as most of you reading this will, he was having some weird joke. That was until I stared up at him, his lanky body towering over mine, his vacant eyes staring at my chubby, stocky physique. I help him on his mission to undo the belt. Click. I run to the exit of the ride, intending to reenact a scene of the Olympic hurdles. Of course, it's much harder to hurdle than it looks, so I do the ever classic one leg over, and roll off the gate of the ride. I was free. I caught my friends on a waltzer car, and hopped on it with them before it started spinning. It wasn't until I told them what happened, when I realized what would have happened if the seatbelt was taken off. The ride, I had seen from watching in the queue, and from around the fair, wasn't going fast enough to provide the force to keep you at the edge. If I had fallen towards the center of the ride, I would have almost certainly been thrown into the mechanics. The protective fence was only waist high. A traveling fare often doesn't have safety in mind, so I would have been flipped over the fence. I truly believed that he would have unbuckled that seatbelt mid-ride. He honestly seemed insane. Every August, the county I lived in would throw a huge fair. There was games, rides, shows, food, all that good stuff for about two weeks. Then they would take it down, and I'd have to wait another year. I think this happened in 2008. I was seven at the time. I'm a guy, and I was just tall enough to ride something I'd wanted to go on for a long time. I convinced my mom to let me and my cousin Jared ride it. Jared was two years older than me and my mom trusted us to be safe, so we ran off to ride it. After the ride, Jared had to go to the bathroom. The fair only had porta potties, so I had to wait outside for him. That's when this man walked up. He said I was supposed to go with him. I asked him why, and he just said my parents said I had to. Now, I know I should have ran away, or got Jared, or something, but this guy said he knew my parents. It's an obvious lie looking back. He didn't even say their names. But I thought if he knew my parents, he wasn't a stranger. The guy started to take me out to his car. Now, to get to the parking lot of this fair, 
You had to walk a long time, probably between 5 and 10 minutes. It was a huge field that they put the fair in. I asked him again where we were going, and he said we were going to go to McDonald's to get food. The closest McDonald's was almost an hour away. I had just ate too, so I said I wasn't hungry, and I wanted to go see my mom. I started to walk away, but he grabbed my arm and started walking me towards his truck. I froze. I knew this was a bad guy now, but I was in some sort of shock and couldn't move. I remember trying to scream, but all that came out was a strangled whisper, and I can remember crying without making a sound. We were right near his truck now, and he was trying to force me into the back seat when this young couple saw him. They must have seen me panicking and crying because the girl ran up and grabbed me and started screaming. The guy came over too, but the bad man was already in his truck. He literally ran over the guy's foot and sped away. That young couple saved my life. I have no idea what that guy would have done to me if we actually got to where he was heading. I know it wasn't McDonald's. The couple walked me to the entrance and the guy made an announcement that there was a missing child at the front. My mom and Jared arrived shortly after that, and they both were crying. I remember running up to her and bursting into tears before whispering why she wanted that man to take me. She said she didn't know who tried to take me, and we hugged tighter and left. We didn't go back to the fair again that year, or at all the next year. My mom was paranoid that the guy was still there, looking for children. I got over it quickly and went on with my life. I only remembered it because my girlfriend wanted to go on that same ride that I did last year. So, scary child molester, murderer, let's not meet again.